I made a video for every single Summer Olympic sport and I posted it here on YouTube as shorts. But I thought it would be helpful to have a video that covers all 43 events in just one video. This is that video and there's chapters down below that can help you skip around to whichever of the 43 events you want to know more about. So the bad news is that these videos will be vertical in a horizontal format, so apologies about that. But the good news is because they were originally shorts, each event description is less than 60 seconds, so it's a great way to cover a lot of events in a relatively short amount of time. Except that actually could be bad news for you if you're trying to deep dive on a specific event like handball or judo. But I've actually got a solution for that too. This is the fifth and goal Summer Olympic preview and it's our free digital magazine available at fifthandgoalsports.com. This is a magazine that has a section for every single event, which includes an explanation of how the sport works, the countries who have had success in the past, a schedule for the event, brackets, and bios on which athletes you'll want to watch this Olympics. If you want to get really, really nerdy, at the back of this magazine is the master schedule that breaks down when every single event is occurring over the next two weeks. And like I said, hopefully the best part of this magazine is that it's totally free. So check it out on our website. You can preview it there. You can download it as a PDF. Heck, if you really wanted to, you could print it out. Although I think you'd have to hate your printer to do that. We're looking certain safety regulations at the Probably just download it. Anyways, a lot of time and effort went into making these pages as good as possible with as much information as possible so that you're set, you know what's going on, and you can follow along. So I hope you check it out. I hope it's a helpful resource to you. Enjoy it. And now, here are the videos. I'm explaining every single Summer Olympic event, and today we're talking about archery. The archery event begins with the ranking round. Each archer shoots 72 arrows at a target located 70 meters away. The archers are then seated into the brackets for the men's and women's individual and the men's, women's, and mixed team events based on their total score. Next is the bracket stage where, in the individual competition, two archers compete one-on-one -on -one against each other. The goal is to win a five-set match. Winning a set earns two points and tying a set earns one point. The player with the most points advances to the next round. So for example, Italy's Mauro Nespoli shot a 10, 10, and 9 for a total of 29 points, while Turkey's Meto Gazos shot a 9, 8, and 9 for a total of 26 points. Because Nespoli scored more points in the set, he earned two points. The team competition works in essentially the same way with each player on a team shooting two arrows per set. I'm attempting to cover all 48 Olympic track and field events in 60 seconds, starting with track events, which take place on a 400 meter track and include sprints, middle distance, and long distance events, as well as hurdles. Shout out Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni. steeplechase, and relay events. The road events include the marathon and the race walk events. In the race walk, one foot must always be in contact with the ground. The field events can be split into two categories, jumping events and throwing events. In the high jump and pole vault, athletes have three chances to clear a bar at a given height. In the long jump and triple jump, athletes make either three or six jumps depending on the round, and the longest jump is the distance taken. The goal of the throwing events is to throw things far, and each person gets three attempts. The men's decathlon and the women's heptathlon combine several events into one. The competition takes place over two days, and the athlete with the most combined points throughout the various events wins. All right, so. I'm explaining every single Summer Olympic sport, and today we are talking about badminton. Badminton is similar to other racket or net sports since the goal of the game is to hit the shuttlecock or birdie over the net until the opponent fails to hit it back. Unlike tennis, the birdie isn't allowed to bounce, so if it hits the ground, the point ends. One other distinction from tennis is that players serve from the service line rather than the back of the court, and overhead serves are not permitted. In the Olympics, the birdie will sometimes top 200 miles per hour. This sport is not easy. A game is played to 21 points, with a point being scored on every serve, and the player who wins two games wins the match. In the 2024 games, there are men's and women's singles competitions, as well as men's, women's, and mixed doubles. I'm going to assume that you know the basics to basketball, but in my quest to explain every summer Olympic sport before the opening ceremonies, here's some real differences between Olympic basketball and the NBA. For one, Olympic quarters are 10 minutes instead of 12, and it takes only five fouls instead of six to foul out of a game. The three-point line is the same one that is used in college and the WNBA. Goaltending rules are also a bit different. It's still a goaltend if you grab or block the ball while it is moving in a downward trajectory, but once the ball hits the rim, any player on offense or defense can play the ball. 
there's also no defensive three second violation in Olympic basketball. The men's team is going for their fifth straight gold medal. It's going to end with the United States hanging on. Something must definitely have gone right if Greg Popovich is smiling. While the women's team is going for their eighth straight gold medal. Olympic 3-on-3 three -three basketball was introduced in the Tokyo Games and it's back for Paris 2024. 3-on-3 three -three basketball is a half-court game and the basketball is actually slightly smaller than a traditional ball. A shot inside the arc is worth 1 point and any shot outside of the arc is worth 2. The game is played to 21 points or until the 10 minute game clock expires. The shot clock is only 12 seconds, so the action is very high paced. The men's team, after not qualifying in 2020, let's not talk about it, will make their Olympic debut led by none other than Jimmer Fredette. Meanwhile, the women's team will defend their gold medal from Tokyo with a roster including Sierra Burdick, Dierica Hamby, Ryan Howard, and Haley Van Lith. I'm explaining every Summer Olympic event, so today, let's talk about BMX Freestyle. Riders complete two 60-second runs through the course while trying to execute tricks in order to score as many points as possible. A group of judges scores the run on a scale of 0 to 100 based on criteria such as the difficulty and creativity of the tricks performed, execution, risk factor, and style. In the qualification round, 12 riders will be split into two heats and will complete their two runs, and the average score of those two runs will be their overall score. The top nine riders will advance to the final. In the final round, each rider will also complete two runs, but only their best score will be used in the final rankings. So that means that the rider with the best score in the final round wins the gold medal. 48 daring riders will compete in Olympic BMX racing. Each heat features up to eight riders at a time. A gate drops to start and the riders enter the course that features hills, jumps, and some ridiculously tight turns all at breakneck speed. Since the race is so fast, crashes are bound to happen, but it's worth noting that it's illegal to intentionally create contact with another rider. The competition begins with the quarterfinals, where riders will get three attempts at the course and will earn points based on how well they place in each attempt. The top 16 riders will advance to the semifinals, which also features a three-run series. Finally, the field will be trimmed down to just eight riders. Those eight riders will take on a winner-take-all race where the winner earns the gold medal. Olympic boxing is split into 13 different weight classes between the men's and women's competitions, and here's how it works. A group of five judges will score the three three-minute round belt, and the scoring system used in the Olympics is the traditional 10-point must scale, which means that judges must give the winner of the round in their eyes 10 points, and the loser of the round will get either seven, eight, or nine points. That scoring is primarily based on the number of blows landed on an opponent's target area, this being an example of that kind of hit, but factors like competitiveness and tactical superiority can also play a role in the judges' scoring. Each weight class is set up in their own bracket, so the winner of the bracket wins the gold medal. I'm explaining every single Summer Olympic event, and today we're talking about the newest Olympic sport, breaking. 16 men and 16 women will compete in the breaking competition. Each battle is a best of three contest, where each competitor gets approximately one minute to finish their round. Nine judges will decide the winner of the competition based on six criteria. Creativity, personality, technique, variety, performativity, and musicality. Unlike a sport like figure skating or artistic swimming, Competitors don't choose their own music for the performance, but will instead cater their dance battle to whatever music the DJ selects. What do you think about this new Olympic event? Olympic canoeing is broken down into two kinds of events, sprint events and slalom events. Sprint events are races straight to the finish line from either 200, 500, or 1,000 meters away, depending on the event. The number of canoers or kayakers will also vary depending on the event and, obviously, whether a canoe or kayak is used. Slalom events take place on a man-made course containing rapids and various obstacles that the athletes must maneuver around. The goal is to reach the end of the course as quickly as possible while avoiding a two-second penalty for touching a gate. If a gate is completely missed, a 50-second penalty is assessed, which basically disqualifies the competitor. New in the 2024 games is the canoe and kayak cross. This event is very similar to the slalom, but rather than battling the clock, the canoers battle one another in a four-person race to the finish. This is Olympic climbing, and here's how it works. Sport climbing is typically divided into three disciplines, speed, bouldering, and lead. 
The goal of speed climbing is to scale a 49 foot wall as quickly as possible. In the elimination rounds, two athletes actually race one another to the top and the losing climber is eliminated from the competition with the exception of the lucky loser, the losing climber who had the fastest time. In the Paris Olympics, the bouldering and lead disciplines are combined into one event. The goal of bouldering is to make it through four different challenging routes called problems in as few attempts as possible within the time limit. Climbers earn a maximum of 25 points for completing the problem and five points for each checkpoint they reach. A failed attempt knocks a tenth of a point off the score. The goal of lead climbing is to climb as high on the wall as possible. Each hold on the wall has a point value assigned and the highest possible score is 100. The scores from bouldering and lead are combined into an overall score and the climber with the highest score wins the gold medal. If you were wondering where the highest point in the Paris region is, it's Ellencourt Hill and it's the location of Olympic mountain biking. There's one mountain biking race for the 36 female riders and one race for the 36 male riders, which are taking place on July 28th and July 29th respectively. While we won't know the total number of laps in the race until the games actually start, the race will last approximately two hours. In 2020, Great Britain's Tom Pidcock broke his collarbone just two months before the Tokyo Games and started the race in 29th place, but he came all the way back to claim the gold medal. In the women's event, Switzerland swept the podium and Yolanda Neff beat every single rider by over a minute. Road cycling in the Summer Olympics is divided into two kinds of events, the time trial and the road race. Both events are races, but the format is pretty different. The time trial is the shorter of the two races and will cover around 20 miles. In this event, the start is staggered, so not all of the riders will begin the race at the same time. So this event isn't really a race to the finish so much as it is a race against the clock, thus the name of the event. The road race is most certainly a race to the finish line, and it is most certainly longer than the time trial. The men's race will cover nearly 100 170 miles and the women's race will cover about 100. If you're impatient, this event probably isn't for you, but I always personally appreciate this event for the ridiculous perseverance of the athletes, and it's also a great opportunity to see all of the different sights Paris has to offer. Welcome to Olympic track cycling. In the individual sprint, riders face off in a 1v1 competition where they often play a cat and mouse game trying to gain the best position before sprinting for the finish. The team sprint features teams of three. One rider exits the course after each lap until the last remaining rider sprints to the finish. In the Kirin, a motorized bike paces the first three laps and then exits, allowing the riders to go all out in the final three laps of the event. The Team Pursuit is a 16-lap race where the riders change places to take turns being the lead rider. In the event that one team catches up to the other team, the race is automatically over. The Madison is a long two-person relay event that is points-based. Sprints are held every 10 laps, and teams earn points based on how they finish in those sprint laps. The Omnium is made up of four races, and cyclists earn points based on how they finish. The scratch race is a simple race to the finish. The tempo race is based on the number of laps won. In the elimination race, the last rider is eliminated every two laps, and the points race is very similar to the Madison. Diving is a super popular Olympic event, and here's how it works. There are two different kinds of diving events, the three meter springboard and the 10 meter platform. For each of those events, there are men's and women's individual and synchronized events. Each dive is given a predetermined degree of difficulty score. Then, a panel of judges score each dive based on factors such as angle of entry, the amount of rotations, and the amount of splash. So this is an excellent dive. And this one, well, uh, not so much. In each round, male divers will complete six dives and female divers will complete five dives. The top 18 divers advance to the semifinals and the top 12 divers advance to the finals. Scores reset after every round, so the finals round will decide the winner of the Olympic medals in. There are three different Olympic equestrian events, jumping, dressage, and eventing, and all three events are competed at both the individual and team level. In the jumping event, riders and horses attempt to complete an obstacle course while avoiding penalties for knocking over any of the 12 obstacles or for completing the course too slowly. The individual jumping final consists of two rounds and the pair with the best penalty score at the end wins the gold medal. If there is a tie, a jump off occurs where time is used as a tiebreaker if the penalty scores are all the same. In the team final, a team's best three scores in each of the two rounds are added together to establish the team's score. In dressage, the horse and rider perform a series of movements synchronized to music, and judges evaluate and score the performance. The competition takes place over three rounds, the Grand Prix, the Grand Prix Special, and the Grand Prix Level Freestyle Test. Each rider earns points both individually and for the 
their respective teams simultaneously. Eventing combines both jumping and dressage, as well as cross country, a longer obstacle course. Riders earn points based on how they finish each of the three events, and the lowest score wins. I'm attempting to explain every Summer Olympic event before the opening ceremonies, so let's talk about fencing. The goal of fencing is to outscore the opponent by landing a touch on the opponent's target area. A game is played to 15, or until three three-minute periods expire. There are three disciplines that each use a different kind of sword. Foil, Epe, and Saber. Saber. The target area is actually different for each of the three disciplines, as is the part of the sword that can be used to earn points. The action happens so quickly that it's sometimes impossible to see who scored a point with the human eye. Thankfully, a light will illuminate when a point is scored. Each of the individual events is determined by a single elimination bracket. The team events are also determined by a bracket. Each team is composed of three fencers, who take turns facing each member of the opposing team over nine three-minute bouts. A bout will also conclude if one fencer scores five points within the three minutes. The team with the most points at the end wins the contest. Field hockey is played on a turf field 100 yards long and 60 yards wide that is watered down prior to a match so the ball sticks better to the ground. The goal is to score more goals than the opposing team over four 15-minute quarters. In order for a goal to count, the shot must be taken from inside the striking circle or at least deflected by someone in the circle. The shot must also be taken with the flat face of the stick. A player is not allowed to trip hook or interfere with another player, and there are a variety of other fouls that can be called. Depending on the kind of foul and where it occurs on the field, the offended team could be awarded a penalty corner or even a penalty stroke, the equivalent of a PK. If the foul is especially egregious, the player that committed the foul can be sent off the field for five minutes and the team must play shorthanded. Twelve teams will compete in both the men's and women's competition. The tournament begins with group play. Teams earn two points for a win and one for a draw and will play a match against the other five teams in their group. The top four teams in each group advance to the knockout stage and a single elimination bracket will determine the medals in Olympic field hockey. Olympic soccer or football actually starts two days before the opening ceremonies and here's how it works. While there's no significant rule changes in the game itself, there's a big difference in the men's competition. Rosters are composed of players who are 23 years old or younger with the exception of three players per roster. Essentially, FIFA doesn't want a global tournament to compete with the World Cup, so they don't allow countries to have their usual full rosters. However, the format could maybe work out in favor for the US. The squad heading to Paris claimed the U-20 CONCACAF Championship in 2022, and they're in a relatively manageable group with France, Guinea, and New Zealand. Perhaps this team can erase the memories of Copa America. Thankfully, that roster rule does not apply to the women's game. After earning bronze in 2020, the US women's team returns to the games with a new look roster that features eight first-time Olympians, including Naomi Gurma and Sam Coffey. Olympic golf will take place at the beautiful Le Golf National Albatross course, which also hosted the 2018 Ryder Cup. The tournament format itself is the traditional four-round, 72-hole event. Qualification for the Olympics happened through the International Golf Federation World Ranking List. 60 players qualify in both the men's and women's competitions, but a country can only bring a maximum of four golfers to the games. So that's bad news for a player like Bryson DeChambeau, who is ranked top 10 in the world currently and recently won the US Open, but he's still ranked behind four other US golfers and won't have the opportunity to compete in Paris. Yeah, I'm mean, frustrated, disappointed. Sure, you could absolutely say that. You know, hopefully one day this game of golf will, will get figured out. Americans Scotty Scheffler and Nellie Corda are both ranked number one in the world, and Corda will look to defend her 2020 gold. Xander Shoffley is also back in the Olympics after taking the gold in the men's competition in Tokyo. Gymnasts compete by completing routines on various apparatuses. In the women's all-around competition, the four rotations are the vault, uneven bars, balance beam, and the floor routine. Even though each apparatus is unique, the scoring system used is the same. The eight most difficult elements in the routine receive points. Each element receives a difficulty score as well as an execution score that starts at 10 points and is reduced for errors. The difficulty and execution scores for the routine are added together for the final score. The scores for all four apparatuses are then added together to give the total score for the all-around event. As gymnasts complete each apparatus, their points are used in the respective qualification for individual events with the exception of the vault. In the team all-around event, the best three scores out of four on each apparatus are added together. In the finals, only three athletes compete on each apparatus and all of the scores are used. The format in the men's competition is the same, but the obvious difference is the apparatuses used. In addition to the vault and floor routine, the men use the pommel horse, rings, parallel bars, and the horizontal bar. 
Most people are familiar with artistic gymnastics, but rhythmic gymnastics have been part of the Summer Olympic program since 1984, and here's how it works. There are two different events in rhythmic gymnastics, the individual all-around and the group all-around, and each event utilizes four apparatuses. Those are the hoop, ball, clubs, and ribbon. An individual routine is between 75 to 90 seconds long for each apparatus. The group routine is between two minutes and 15 seconds and two and a half minutes across the board. Routines are synchronized to music. Routines are scored by three groups of judges who provide scores based on degree of difficulty, artistry, and execution. With the difficulty score, the highest and lowest scores are dropped and the middle two scores are averaged. The artistry score is based on factors such as the connection between the music and movements, expressiveness, and use of space. Like the difficulty score, the highest and lowest execution scores are dropped and the middle scores are averaged. 16 men and 16 women will compete in Olympic trampoline gymnastics. There are two routines, a compulsory and a voluntary routine. Each routine is made up of 10 jumps or skills. In the compulsory routine, athletes perform eight skills that are judged purely on execution and two skills that are judged on both execution and difficulty. And the gymnast can actually choose what those two skills are. In the voluntary routine, all 10 skills are judged on both execution and difficulty, and there's also a third score that is used, time of flight. The more time a gymnast spends in the air, the higher their time of flight score will be, and you'll often see them reach heights of over 25 feet. After the 10 skills or jumps have been performed, gymnasts are expected to demonstrate a controlled stop. The execution score is based on factors such as the legs being kept together and the landings being near the center of the trampoline. In the qualification round, the scores from the compulsory and voluntary routines are added together to give a final score. The top eight gym gymnasts advance to the final. That final uses just the voluntary routine to determine the medalists. I'm explaining every single Summer Olympic sport, so today, let's talk about handball. The goal of handball is to score more goals than the opposing team over the course of two 30-minute halves. The rules for moving with the ball are somewhat similar to basketball since a player can either pass to a teammate or dribble the ball, and they can take no more than three steps without dribbling. A key difference is that a player can only hold the ball for a maximum of three seconds. In fact, if the team with the ball is playing two passively, the referee can rule it a turnover and the ball goes to the other team. A player who wants to attempt a shot must do so behind the goal line. Often players jump past the goal line and throw the ball in midair to get the best shot possible. The game is physical and defenders are generally permitted to make contact to disrupt the offense, although like any other sport, there are fouls that will be called and can sometimes result in a free throw or even a penalty throw for the other team. The teams are split into two groups of six. They will play one another in the group stage, and then the top four teams in each group advance to the knockout stage, which is a single elimination tournament. This is judo, and here's how it works. The goal in judo is to either throw your opponent to the ground, pin the opponent on the ground, or force them into submission. Two judokas face off in a four minute contest. The contest ends immediately if an ippon is scored. An ippon can be scored by throwing the opponent down on their back with force, holding an opponent on their back for 20 seconds, or by the opponent tapping out. Ippons are pretty rare, so the other way to score is a wazari. A wazari is scored for a less powerful throw than an ippon, or holding an opponent on their back for at least 10 seconds. The game also ends if two wazaris are scored. If the score is tied at the end of the four minutes, the contest moves to golden score, where the next wazari or ippon wins the match. The competition in the Olympics is divided into seven weight classes for the men and seven weight classes for the women. Each judoka will be put into their class's respective bracket, and the last judoka Doka remaining in the bracket wins the gold medal. This might be the strangest Olympic sport. Let me explain. Olympic modern pentathlon is a competition made up of five skills, fencing, swimming, horse jumping, and the laser run, a race that combines cross-country running and 10-meter pistol shooting. That combination of events seems pretty odd, but consider that this event has been in the Olympic Games since 1912. When it was invented, swimming, running, riding, shooting, and sword fighting were all selected since they resembled the key abilities of a soldier in that era. The modern pentathlon begins with fencing, swimming, and horse jumping, and a point system is used to quantify those events. Then in the laser run, athletes start the race with a delay according to the number of points they have compared to the person in the lead. In the finals, all four elements will be run on the same day. The first athlete to cross the finish line in the laser run wins the gold medal for modern pentathlon. I'm explaining every summer Olympic event, so let's talk about rowing. In Olympic rowing, there are two disciplines, sweep rowing, where each athlete uses a single oar, and sculling, where athletes use two oars that are on opposite ends of the boat. All rowing events in the 2024 Paris Games cover a distance of 2,000 meters, and up to six individuals or teams compete at once in a single race. 
Each of the 14 rowing events starts with heats. The top three finishers in the heats advance to the semifinal round. However, if an individual or team fails to make the top three, their event isn't over yet. Instead, they'll head to the repechage round where they will have another chance to make the semifinals. Eventually, six finalists will compete for the gold medal in their respective event. In Olympic Rugby Sevens, a team can move the ball down the field by running with the ball, kicking it, or passing the ball to a teammate as long as that pass is not a forward pass. The team with the ball tries to touch the ball on the ground past the try line for a try, which is worth five points. The scoring team then has the opportunity to make a conversion 20 meters back from where the try was scored, and that's worth two points. A team can also attempt a drop goal during the run of play, which is worth three points if the ball goes through the uprights. A successful penalty kick is also worth three points. Defenders are allowed to tackle the player with the ball. Once tackled, the player must give up possession of the ball. Typically, a teammate is very close by to take the ball, but the defense is allowed to grab the ball too, and a ruck can form as the two teams grapple for possession. If the ball goes out of play, the game is restarted with a line out or a set piece. If the ball is moved forward illegally, play is resumed with a scrum. The team with the most points after two seven minute halves wins the match. This is Olympic sailing and here's how it works. The goal of sailing is to reach the finish line as quickly as possible while navigating around a series of buoys. Teams can pass one another but must do so on a specific side depending on which way the wind is blowing. An individual or team earns points based on what place they finish the roughly 10 races that make up the preliminary competition. The top 10 individuals or teams move on to the medal race. That medal race is worth double points and the boat with the lowest overall score after all races is the gold medalist. There are actually 10 gold medals being awarded in sailing in Paris since there are several different sailboats used. Those types are dinghy, catamaran, skiff, kiteboard, and windsurfer or windfoiling. Great Britain had the most gold medals in sailing in both Rio and Tokyo, and will be looking for the three-peat in Paris. I'm explaining every single Olympic sport, and today we're talking about shooting. The events are broken down into rifle, pistol, and shotgun competitions. In the rifle and pistol competitions, athletes aim at a target and try to score as many points as possible. In the qualification round, between 40 to 120 shots are taken, depending on the event, and typically the top eight athletes advance to the final round. In the final round, the lowest ranking finalist is eliminated every two shots, and the last man or woman standing wins the gold medal. In the rapid fire pistol event, athletes have four seconds to take five shots at five different targets. In the three positions rifle, athletes take shots in the kneeling, prone, and standing positions. The two shotgun events are trap and skeet. The object of both events is to knock down a target that travels at a speed of approximately 60 miles per hour. The finals in the shotgun events works the same way, where the lowest ranking finalists are slowly eliminated. It's not uncommon for shotgun shooters to hit every single shot in a round, so a shoot-off can occur as a tiebreaker. In Olympic skateboarding, there are two different events, street and park. In the street competition, athletes get two 45 second runs at the course and can attempt five tricks. Judges score the run on a scale of 0 to 100 based on factors such as difficulty, execution, and the variety of the tricks that are performed. In addition to the run itself, each trick that a skater performs is also ranked on a scale of 0 to 100. The final score for the round is the score of the best run added to the score of the top two tricks. The top eight skaters move on to the finals and the process repeats. The format for the park competition is similar to the street competition, but there are a couple of major differences. For one, skaters attempt three runs in the park competition and their overall score for the round is the score of their best run. In park, judges are still looking for difficulty in execution, but they also take into account height and the speed and flow of a skater through the course. There's one specific characteristic that sets surfing apart from any other event in the Paris 2024 games, but first, Here's how it works. The goal of surfing is to score as many points as possible. Judges score each wave based on the degree of difficulty, variety, innovation, and combination of maneuvers, as well as speed, power, and flow. Any score above eight on the one to 10 point scale is usually considered very good. The final score of the heat consists of the points from the surfer's top two waves. Two surfers actually go up against one another in a head-to-head -head heat, and the surfer with more points moves on. That heat can last anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes, depending on the weather. Athletes take turns riding each wave and can ride as many waves as they want during a heat. So the thing that makes surfing unique, the competition is taking place in Tahiti, which isn't exactly close to Paris, but it obviously makes sense to have surfing in a place that is well known for having beautiful waves. American Carissa Moore won the inaugural gold medal in the Tokyo Games, and she's back to compete in Paris or Tahiti, I guess. In the Olympics, there are 35 different kinds of swimming events centered around four different swimming strokes, freestyle, breaststroke, butterfly, 
and backstroke over various distances in the 50 meter pool. So for example, the 200 meter freestyle is a four lap race using the freestyle technique. There are also relay events and medley events. In relay events, a team of four swimmers all swim a portion of the race. In medley events, all four swimming strokes are used in a single race, either by an individual swimmer or by a relay team. Katie Ledecky is already the greatest long distance swimmer of all time, but if she earns three more gold medals in the Paris schemes, she'll have the most gold medals of any female Olympic athlete ever. In addition to the indoor swimming events, there is also a 10 kilometer outdoor marathon swim that is scheduled to take place in the Seine River, but well, if you know, you know. I'm explaining every single Summer Olympic event, and today we're talking about artistic swimming. First is the technical routine, where swimmers perform nine predetermined elements performed in a specific order and synchronized to music. The technical routine is followed by the free routine. The free routine is a bit longer, and swimmers have more freedom to choreograph whatever they would like, although they still must complete a required number of specific movements. That's where the duet event ends, but the team event also includes the acrobatic routine, which is comprised of seven acrobatic elements. The duet or team with the highest score at the end wins, but how exactly does the score work? Every element has a predetermined degree of difficulty. A panel of judges gives each element an execution score, which is then multiplied by the degree of difficulty. The result is called the technical score. A different panel of judges gives an artistic expression score based on factors like choreography, and that score is added to the technical score to give a total score for the performance. This is probably what you look like playing table tennis, and this is what Olympic table tennis looks like. Here's how it works. The goal of table tennis is to hit the ball on the opponent's side of the table until they fail to return the ball back. A game of table tennis is decided when a player or team reaches 11 points while winning by at least two. A match is won in a singles or doubles competition when a player or team wins four games. In doubles play, players on a team alternate hitting the ball. In addition to singles and doubles play, there is team table tennis. In the team event, a match consists of four singles matches and one doubles match. Each of those individual matches are played over the best of five games. When an individual match is won, the respective team earns a point, and the first team to three points wins the overall match. The Chinese have utterly dominated table tennis since it was introduced as an Olympic sport in 1988, and have won 32 out of the 37 gold medals that have been awarded. I'm explaining every single Summer Olympic event, and today let's talk about Taekwondo. The goal of Taekwondo is to score more points than your opponent by landing various strikes to the opponent. Five points are awarded for a turning kick to the head, four points for a turning kick to the trunk protector, three points for a regular kick to the head, two points for a kick to the trunk protector, and one point for a valid punch to the trunk protector. A competitor also receives a point if their opponent commits a penalty, such as falling down or delaying the match. Electronic sensors in an athlete's equipment actually measure whether a kick or punch has enough force of impact to score points. A match consists of three two-minute rounds. In the Paris games, the competition has changed changed to a best of three round competition rather than the total number of points at the end of a match. The athletes of the eight different weight classes are placed into a bracket and the winner of each bracket wins the gold medal. This is Olympic tennis and here's how it works. The game itself functions like normal tennis. And for those wondering about the scoring system, points in tennis go from love to 15 to 30 to 40 and the game winning point. Rumor has it that way back in the day, tennis scores were shown on a clock, which is how we get this kind of weird scoring system. Anyways, in the Olympics, there are men's and women's singles and men's, women's, and mixed doubles competitions. The scoring format is the same for all five competitions. Typically, the first player or team to win six games wins the set. However, a player must win the set by two games or must win a tiebreaker if the set is tied at six games apiece. Tiebreaker rules use the same format as the four Grand Slam tournaments. I am personally interested in watching Nadal and Carlos Alcaraz competing on the same doubles team for Spain. Nadal has always been my favorite of the big three, and Alcaraz is already stepping into his shoes at just 21 years old. Team USA is also looking for a bounce back games after not meddling in tennis in Tokyo for the first time in over 100 years. I'm explaining every Summer Olympic event, so let's talk about the triathlon. The triathlon is made up of three parts, the 1.5 kilometer swim, a 40 kilometer cycle, and a 10 kilometer run. The parts are completed in that order. 
The men's event takes place on July 30th, and the women's event takes place on July 31st. There's also a mixed relay triathlon. In this event, each athlete on a team of four swims 300 meters, cycles 6.8 kilometers, and runs two kilometers in a relay format. In the Tokyo Games, Great Britain won the most medals with two silver medals in the individual competition and a gold in the mixed relay. In the women's event, Flora Duffy claimed the first ever gold medal for Bermuda. I'm explaining every summer Olympic event, so let's talk about indoor volleyball. The goal of the game is to return the ball to the opponent's side of the court using no more than three hits until the opponent fails to return the ball back. A set is played to 25 points and the team that wins three sets wins the match. If the match is tied two sets each, a fifth set is played to 15 points. Six players play on a team at the same time. One of those players might be wearing a different colored jersey. That player is called the libero. The libero can sub in for any member of the backcourt. They aren't allowed to block or tack shots by reaching over the net, so their primary purpose is to pass and help their team on defense. This sport isn't for the faint of heart. Spikes routinely top 50 miles per hour, and the verticals these athletes possess are sometimes otherworldly. The indoor competition begins with pool play, where each team plays the other five teams in their pool, and the top four teams in each pool advance to the knockout stage. Beach volleyball is one of the most popular summer Olympic sports, and here's how it works. The goal of the game is to return the ball to the opponent's side of the court using no more than three hits until the opponent fails to return the ball back. Two players make up a team. The first team to win two sets wins the match. Sets are normally played to 21 points, but if the match is tied one set apiece, a third set is played to 15. The 24 teams on both the men's and women's side are broken down into six pools. A team will play the other three teams in their pool, and the top two teams advance to the round of 16. A few third place teams will also make the knockout stage. Chase Budinger's story to the Olympics is pretty unique. Yes, that's him playing in the NBA, and seven years after his retirement from the league, he is joining Miles Evans and representing Team USA in Paris. The goal of water polo is to score more points than the other team by throwing the ball into the opposing team's goal over the course of four eight-minute quarters. But the wild part of water polo is that the pool is three meters deep, so players are either swimming or treading water for the entire game. Once a team gains possession of the ball, a 30-second shot clock starts counting down, and that team must attempt a shot at the goal before the shot clock expires. The team on offense can either swim forward with the ball or pass it around until they go for a shot attempt, while the defense tries to block the ball or just take the ball away. Water polo is a very physical sport, however, there are penalties like holding or sinking a player who doesn't have the ball. Depending on the penalty, a player may get kicked out of play and must swim to the equivalent of the penalty box for 20 seconds. Players can also foul out if they pick up three of those kinds of penalties. Team USA is looking for their fourth straight gold medal in women's water polo, and team captain Matt Maggie Steffens could become the first water polo player ever with four gold medals. I'm explaining every single summer Olympic sport, and today let's talk about weightlifting. There are two different lifts used in Olympic weightlifting, the snatch and the clean and jerk. In the snatch, an athlete raises a barbell overhead in one fluid motion and then stands upright without hesitation after that motion. In the clean and jerk, the bar is first pulled up to the shoulders. Then the athlete pushes the bar overhead and holds a vertical stance until the referees indicate approval. The motion of the clean and jerk typically allows weightlifters to lift more than the snatch. In both types of lifts, athletes have three attempts to lift the most weight they can. A weightlifter's final score is the athlete's best snatch attempt and the best clean and jerk attempt added together. In the 2024 games, there are five men's weight classes and five women's weight classes. China dominated the competition in 2020, winning half of the gold medals in weightlifting. There are two styles of wrestling, freestyle and Greco-Roman. Both are similar, but in Greco-Roman, a wrestler can't attack below the waist or use his legs to trip or execute a hold. The goal of wrestling is to score more points than the opponent over two three-minute periods. The most points that can be awarded at once is five. Five points are awarded when a grand amplitude throw occurs that looks something like this. In a five-point play, the opponent is picked up completely off the ground. A wrestler could also be awarded four points for a throw that maybe doesn't meet the requirement for a five-point throw. Two points are awarded for a takedown, rolling an opponent on their shoulders, or exposing the opponent's back to the mat. One point is awarded typically as a penalty when an opponent commits an infraction, like stepping out of the ring. A wrestling match is over immediately if a wrestler pins the opponent's shoulder blades to the mat for a full second. 